here. So we can go like nobody else. interested in the bird walk we're gonna leave from here so this little bird up here that just sang once did you guys hear him I was like vireo vireos are small treetop birds they're usually kind of olive green so they blend with the leaves they say their name but he does it kind of slow and it's still high and sweet so we call that a blue-headed vireo We'd like to go up this road because there's lots of warblers and woodland birds up here, and we can see some water birds on the lake. Birds are kind of like people. They have addresses they prefer. So there are some birds that like being on the water and some birds that like being up in the trees. And I just heard a red-bellied woodpecker, so he's around pretty close. Red-bellied woodpeckers don't really have a red belly. The back of their head is red, and the males get a little bit of a pink tinge on their belly in breeding season, but you won't often see it. And then there's a titmouse also singing. That's the one you'll have in your yard, if, depending on where you live. They mainly seed eaters. If you feed them at your house, they love uh, safflower. That's one of their favorite things. I mean, of course, they eat sunflower too. Itty bitty woodpecker, but he has a, his bill is thin and slightly curved. He doesn't usually poke holes, he just pulls bugs out of little crevices. If, if you see a bird going upside down down a tree in a straight line or even, uh, even around, that's going to be a nuthatch. If you see one going straight up the tree like that, clinging right to the trunk, that's going to be the creeper. And not an easy bird to find. So there's big holes in this tree. Can you see the shape of the hole? That's kind of circular, but see how it has corners? It's, it's also a little bit square. Really big woodpecker that makes square-shaped holes is called a pileated woodpecker. So there's a wood thrush singing from somewhere up around here. There's an oven bird just called. So an oven bird's a little warbler, a migrant. Beautiful, it's a really beautiful little bird. They're called oven birds because they nest in little covered nests right. close to the ground. So they called, the, they thought they looked like little ovens. Right. See, see the green things? Yeah. They look like aphids. Oh my goodness, yeah.
Regis and Regis is a bald eagle and he is 14 years old. We've had him since he was two, a little over two years old and he's going to live to be about 35 to 40 years old. And bald eagles, uh, this is a male. The females are a little bit larger. If he could extend both wings he'd have about a six foot wingspan and that's as long as this main table here. Um, but he broke a wing in the wild, it healed wrong in the wild, and there's no way to go back in and fix it without losing the wing completely. So he's with us for life, he's grounded. So he's, uh, he's as you can see, very relaxed, he's taking it easy. Um, he's, he actually likes seeing people and coming out and doing these programs a lot. The great horned owl's name is Hooli, H-O-O-L-I-E, and we named her that because when we got her at five weeks old, she was a hooligan. And uh, she is now 16 years old, and she'll live to be about 30. She is a victim of kidnapping, so to speak. We call it bird napping. Uh, she was found as a little chick, and uh, the, her nest had been destroyed. She's just a couple days old, and some people wanted to keep her just like in Harry Potter films, and that is illegal to do. So she ended up with them for about five weeks, and as her eyes focused as a chick, instead of focusing on mom and dad, great horned owl, they focused on the people that picked her up and took her home. So she has become what we call a human imprint. She associates everything with humans. She thinks that humans are her species. So um, we cannot release her for that reason, but she also ended up with uh, some injuries from being falling out of the nest when she was so young. So she ended up with a wing that can't really hold the air. So two problems for poor Huli. If we had gotten her when they found her, within a day or so of, of them finding her, all of her problems could have been fixed and she could have been out in the ecosystem doing what she's supposed to be doing. But now she's an ambassador and she gets to come out and meet everybody. And um, if she, she has about a five foot wingspan and you'll find great horned owls throughout North, North America. Um, they're very, uh, in South America and Central America as well. They're kind of shy, retiring, and they eat a lot of different kinds of foods, mammals and stuff like that. And then Ron over there has Ryan the red-tailed hawk. Um, Ryan came to us about four years ago uh, as, an, as a juvenile. He was just turning two years old. We got to watch him get his red tail, which is what red tails do. They get the t red tail when they're two. Uh, he had been scavenging the, road, the interstate uh, over in Kanawha County. He had had a broken wing uh, at the elbow and, of course, evaded everybody, so nobody caught him and it healed wrong. You can see he has a little bit of an, what we call angel wing. It sort of droops out away from his body a little bit. Uh, so he can't fly and he got really, really thin and, and weak and people were able to scoop him up and get him to us. He'll live to be about 20 to 25 years old. 